Hello guys, this video is part of my brand new web scraping in Python using Scrapey and Splash course. So if you are interested in learning web scraping, make sure to enroll. I leave a coupon in the description box so you can buy it with $10 only. In the last lecture, we start by this location path where we select the H4 node that has the class attribute equal to sub dash title. But in fact, this is called the abbreviated syntax in XPath. So to show you the full expression, I'm gonna delete this one and then I'm gonna type slash descendant dash or dash self colon colon node with two parentheses. Now this expression itself can be divided into three parts. The slash, which indicates the document root, also known as the context node. Then we have descendant dash or dash self. This is known as an axis. An axis is a location step that determines which direction to navigate in the tree. Should I go up or should I go down? The last part is called node test. It's where you can specify what node you want to select. In this case, node with parentheses means select any type of node. It can be an element node, text node, comment node, and so on. Now to chain things together, this location path in overall means select all nodes, including nodes, children's children, that are below the root node. So if you see here, this expression returned 44 nodes. The first one is the root. The second node is the doc type node, the HTML node, and the head node. I'm not gonna go over all the nodes, but basically it will select all the nodes in the HTML file, including the root. Now to select the H4 node, we need to tell XPath to search in children nodes. So we have to use another axis called child. So slash child colon colon, and then the node test, which is H4. And then we're gonna use predicates to select only the H4 node that has the class attribute. So double square brackets, and instead of using the abbreviated syntax of attributes, which is the at sign, I'm gonna use another axis called attribute, colon, colon, and then class, equal, between two quotation marks, sub dash title. Good. This XPath expression does the same thing as the last one. The only difference is in the syntax. And obviously, most of the time, you will be using the abbreviated syntax, but I felt that it is necessary to let you guys understand how things work and not just giving you examples that you will end up just memorizing them. Anyway, let's continue. Now let's take a look at another axis called parent. I'm gonna do that through an example. So let's say we want to get the parent of all the list items. So in the search box, I'm gonna use the abbreviated syntax of the descendant or self axis. So double slash, and then ally, and then slash, and then the axis name, parent, colon, colon, node. See, it highlights only the UL node, which is the parent of all the list items. Now, what if we want to get all the ancestors of all the list items? In other words, how to select the parent, the grandparent, and grandparent of the list items. So this time, instead of using the parent axis, we can use the ancestor axis. As you can see, it returned four nodes. The first one is the root, the second one is the HTML node, the body node, and the UL node. Also, you can use ancestor dash or dash self. It's similar to the previous one, but in addition to the root, the HTML node, the body node, and the UL node, it will return also all the list items. Now, the last axis that I want you to know about is called preceding. This will select every node before the ally node, except its ancestors. So if I remove this one and replace it with preceding, it will return the doc type node, the head node also, but it didn't select the HTML node because it's considered like an ancestor of the list items. Also, you might notice that the third item is empty. This is because of the extra new line between the head node and the meta node and also because XPath evaluated it as an empty text node. So in overall, it will select all the nodes except the HTML node, the body node, and the UL node. 
I think now we covered about 80% of the available access in XPath. There is also following and following dash sibling and preceding dash sibling. I'll include them in the cheat sheet of this section, so make sure to check them.